with God's grace and tiny bit of efforts from my side, I have managed to get a distinction in both anatomy and uh, biochemistry. And I missed distinction unfortunately by 8 marks in physiology. I am just telling this not to brag about it, but to show you that it is actually possible to do it. If someone like me can get a distinction in two subjects, then you can definitely get a distinction in all three subjects. I am going to be talking about how to present your paper in first year university exams to get the maximum scores. Point number one, handwriting is actually important. If you are writing it in a way that it is not even legible, then obviously people won't be reading the points. Point number zero, I am naming it zero because it should be in the back of your head the whole time. People who are correcting your papers are probably above 50 or above 60. They are actually extremely experienced. They have so much more knowledge than you and they are busy with their own lives. So you have to keep these three things in the back of your head. So this is point zero. So why I am saying this is that since they are above 50, your handwriting is kind of important. Like don't end up writing in a very vague way. Write it somewhat clearly so that someone above 50 can actually read your paper properly. Since they are much more experienced than you, you can't cheat them with some random things. You can't just write papers and papers of irrelevant information and expect them to give scores. They know their subjects so well, which is why they are now correcting exam papers of MBBS students. So you have to keep this in your head. Since they are busy, they don't have much time to see all the intricate points in your paper. So if you want the details of your paper to show up, highlight properly. So this is actually the concept of attending an MBBS paper. So let's go with point one. Point one, have a good handwriting. I just explained why you should have a good handwriting. But also at the back of our head, if someone has a good handwriting, we all think that the person studies well, isn't it? If someone is writing crazy bad, then it, we just automatically assume that the person doesn't really study that good. Like till my 10th standard, I had a pretty decent handwriting. I in fact participated even in handwriting competitions and I got a second prize. But then for some reason, from 11th standard, my handwriting has deteriorated a lot. Uh, so I'm just trying to improve my handwriting even now, but it is not really that great, but uh, I'm still working on it. So definitely have a good handwriting, which is legible, but it doesn't mean that you have to write like crazy cursive handwriting, italics, aerial empty bold. It should be legible. It should be easy to understand for someone who is above 50. Then point number two, try to highlight, underline and do all those beautiful things. Because only recently my pathology mentor at Madhuri Medical College told that if you underline, if you highlight in your paper, it means that you are putting that extra effort, you are putting that extra hard work into the paper to help the examiner. So the, so the examiner will be definitely impressed by this and they will easily give you good marks. Point number three, write it in points, period. Just write in points. If someone asks you to write in paragraphs, you should just cut the friendship. Just write in points. It should be perfect on point answers. It should be on point. Like they're asking, what is the nerve supply for? Bicep break game. What is the nerve supply for? This muscle. On point answer, you should write very neatly. For instance, let's take nerves. You should start about origin. Uh, write origin. Write just the origin. That's a period. Then course. Then relations. Then clinical anatomy. That's it. Then a relevant diagram alongside. So this is all you're supposed to do. Next point, draw diagrams as much as possible in all the three papers. You heard me right in all the three papers. Like apparently one of my senior now, she also drew images for biochemistry. Like I, I actually asked her like, would you draw, would you be drawing test tubes in biochemistry? Like that's all you can draw, right? Uh, but then she told that if it comes to urea cycle, Instead of just simply writing the steps, you can draw a nice liver there and then draw. If you are uh, writing about TCA, you can draw this nice cell and the like TCA is happening. If you are writing about beta oxidation of fatty acids, you can put this nice cell and you can draw uh, uh, where the various things are happening. So this will also impress the examiner and will make them give you more marks. So draw diagrams. Anatomy is all about diagrams. Draw in every single page. Like this is a diagram that I drew in the paper. Just think how impressed the examiner will be. They will like, they'll be forced to give me marks. That's it. So what have we seen till now? Write neatly. Write in points. Don't write in paragraphs. Draw a ton of diagrams. The next point is quality matters more than quantity. It doesn't matter if you write so many pages. 
If you give the thing that the examiner wants in a short amount of time, then you're going to get a lot of marks. For instance, uh, I have a senior. Uh, he apparently wrote the exam papers in just 17 pages and he scored a distinction very nicely also. So it doesn't matter about the quantity. If you write 30 pages, you will get more marks. It doesn't mean like that. Like my faculties used to tell that, just write how much ever is needed. If you have to write three pages for breast, you have to write three pages for breast. It doesn't, if someone is writing 10 pages of story, it doesn't matter. If you give three pages of proper solid information, then it's going to work so well. And have this rule in your mind. If it comes to essay, try to draw at least like four diagrams. If it comes to short notes, try to draw one or two diagrams. The diagrams obviously don't have to be like so detailed, but it should be anatomically relevant. You can't just create your own relations inside the body. Just make sure it is anatom anatomically relevant. And one very, very important thing is draw color, use colors. I, I still remember this very clearly. I asked to my faculty in uh, anatomy department, should we use colors for uh, uh, drawing in anatomy, sir? And then for which he told, do you study in school? You're in college, nah? you should use colors. It's just as simple as that. You should use colors. And you know, I used to do this, like I'll once draw in pencil and then use a black pen and then draw over the pencil. So I'll give this nice thing, nice uh, vibrant uh, thing. And then once you color, it looks super good. And now don't tell me that you don't have enough time. You have all the time. You can actually do it because I did it. You can definitely do it. Don't worry. You got this. Okay, so today I'm doing really a lot. And the final thing. Marks don't matter. Period. They simply don't matter. It doesn't matter if you get it. Like if someone gets distinction, it doesn't mean that he is like the topper of everyone. And if someone fails, it doesn't mean like he didn't study at all. Like, uh, you know, I have got some of my friends. Like, some of them were very lucky to have literally got the questions that they studied the previous night. So they have got distinctions. And there are also some people who studied really, really well the whole year, but then didn't really revise much the day before the exam, and then they ended up not getting a distinction. So if you get a distinction, it doesn't mean that you are like the top bar. But apparently, if someone is getting distinction, it means that they love the subject, they have put the hard work. But don't just beat yourself up if you end up not getting a distinction, it doesn't matter. Just pass the exam. At least that's what my father says. Uh, my father is a doctor as well. Just like most MBBS students nowadays are. Most MBBS students' fathers are doctors nowadays. So anyways, he constantly reminds me that marks don't matter. Even if you fail in all the subjects, it doesn't matter. You can always give the additional exam. So, the only goal should be to gain knowledge. This video is solely for the people who wanted to score marks in exam. And uh, like, it's not like I don't care about marks now. I'm constantly telling myself to not care about marks. But you know, since my childhood, I have always been this person who wants to be in the creamy layer of the class. The person who wants to like study well. So now I have slowly started to reduce that. Like I am, I am feeling like, I don't really have to show my knowledge through marks. I can show my knowledge by treating patients in real life. So this is also a mindset that I'm trying to like put inside my head the whole time. I'm just saying this now because don't just end up beating yourself because you're not able to study well now. Don't worry. Study well. I mean, you should still study well. But knowledge is all that matters. Marks simply don't define you. So that's it for today. And um, yeah, just like most of the videos, this has started with something academic and then ended up with something philosophical. So if this kind of videos attract you, let me know by smashing the like button, which is what every YouTuber does. And also subscribe because that is going to help me make more such videos. It will motivate me. So that's it. And as always, thank you for watching. See you soon.